Well, Seattle hockey fans, our winning streak, our point streak officially over. And to boot, the Pittsburgh Pens, they shut us out in the Berg on Martin Luther King Jr. Day. Let's talk about it coming up on today's episode of Locked on Kraken. You are Locked on Kraken. Your daily podcast on the Seattle Kraken. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. We are the Seattle Kraken. Hey, hey, what do you say, Seattle hockey fans? Welcome to another episode of Locked on Kraken, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, where we bring you your favorite team every single day. Erica L. Ayala here, your host of Locked on Kraken. I'm also a contributor, NHL and women's basketball to CBS Sports, and I am the founder of Black Rosie Media, a media outlet empowering Black women and melanated creators in sports media. You can find the Founding Four podcast over there. You can find Gotta Get Up, a podcast for New York Liberty fans over there, and a few other fun things that we'll have coming up once we get closer to Paris 2020, Paris 2024, excuse me, summer Olympics. I want to let you know that today's episode of Locked on Kraken brought to you by our friends at FanDuel. Now, we know that this is our go-to spot when it comes to your sports betting, but uh, right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. Make sure you visit FanDuel.com backslash locked on to get started. We'll talk a little bit more about that coming up. But if you put money down on the Kraken to win against Pittsburgh, I don't exactly know what the particulars were, but we lost the game three to nothing, ending the nine game winning streak, ending the 13 game point streak. And honestly, a little bit of a lethargic feel to this game. The Pittsburgh Penguins were able to get on the board first um, in the second period within the first 50 seconds of the second frame. It was O'Connor. He gets uh, assisted by Rust and Malkin. And then Sidney Crosby in short order after that, uh, assisted by Latang and Rackle. And Crosby also got an empty netter in the third period. Uh, Carlson and Rackle, once again, Rackle with the primary assist, Carlson with a secondary assist there. You know, I think Joey Decord, who was in net, some people were surprised, and certainly people after the game were a little bit put out that Joey Decord started in net, not because Joey's been playing bad, not by any stretch, but it goes back to what we have talked about before on this show. And we've talked about it last year around this time when it was Martin Jones who was the hot hot hand, excuse me, and wondering if there was too much usage there. But uh, it is what it is. The overall shots on goal in this game, 33 shots on goal in favor of the Pens versus 22 by the Seattle Kraken. If memory serves in the first period, the Kraken were outshot 11 to about 6. Faceoffs 60 40 in favor of the Pens. Neither team scored on their two power play opportunities. Both teams saw four penalty minutes, 21 hits put down by the Kraken, 12 by the Pens. That was an interesting stat line to see. And we'll talk a little bit about exits from the game, injuries ahead of the game, all of that stuff. Giveaways, seven giveaways for the Kraken, four giveaways for the Pens, nine takeaways, though, for the Kraken to six for the Penguins. Last time we played, uh, well, excuse me, the next time we play the Pens will be in Seattle late next month. So, you know, I didn't I didn't love this performance. I didn't love this performance by the Seattle Kraken. And we're going to get into the players that were missing. And it's not that they are insignificant. 
it is very significant uh, to talk about the players that we were missing, including one that exited the game in the first period of this game. Um, We'll talk about that. But overall, I just thought it was an uninspired performance. Jaden Schwartz talked to media after the game, and if you saw the post game show, then with a you know with in the studio, then you you heard a little bit of what he was saying. Just uh, felt that they were kept to the outside. I will give Pittsburgh credit for that. The Seattle Kraken just really couldn't get anything going. I'm not mad per se. Uh, you know, it's bound to happen, but it just it just was unfortunate. You don't want to lose, and I, I just don't know that the guys, you know, really showed up. But it's understandable. It's been a long road trip already in week two of that road trip, and have a and, and on the back end of a road trip, you have a back to back. Pittsburgh today, it was an afternoon game. They still have to travel to New York. There's been a little bit of weather. Uh, be, it's, it's well beyond sweater weather <laughs> on the Northeast. I mean, Nashville got hit. I guess that's, well, I still consider Nashville more East than West, but I suppose that's all relative. But, um, you know, I guess what I'm saying is if this game had come among a cluster of losses, I think I would have felt differently. It's coming in a cluster of wins and you don't like the streak to be ended. You want the guys to go out and perform. Sorry, I have something in my eye. Woo! You want the guys to go out and perform at a level where they've been meeting success. It just didn't happen. The concern that I have more so about the performance tonight is what are we going to see tomorrow? And we know that Riker Evans was on this trip, and we were expecting some lineup changes, but now they are absolute. There will absolutely be lineup changes, not just for tomorrow's game in New York, but for how long after that. And that's a little bit of the concern right now. So let me show you some of the game flow chart and the heat map. And then coming up after that, we're going to talk about some of the injuries and they stem from the Columbus game, maybe even an illness running through the team. And then we'll close out the show. You'll hear from Dave. You'll hear a little bit from Jaden and Riker. And then also apologies for the show that went out on the weekend. I was supposed to give you some Ty Cartier content that will be coming out tomorrow. So a little sub episode, I'll let you know about tomorrow later. Um, but let's first go to, um, just, uh, we're going to go to natural stat trick and I want you to see the game flow chart that you can see up here. If you're watching on YouTube, I'll explain it for anyone not watching on YouTube, but you can see the game flow here. The Seattle Kraken, they're on the bottom part of this graph. They're outside of one little blip in the first period, this game is all above the horizon line, so to speak. So Pittsburgh, in a big way, commanding this game. You can see the, the little golden blips here. Those are their goals that they scored, again, almost immediately into the second period. And then the empty netter, even as we're getting to the 10 minute mark, the six minute mark, Eddie Olchek was on the uh, broadcast and had a lot to say. I know a lot of people also were talking about officiating, didn't seem consistent. There was the second goal where Joey, I think, felt that he got bumped in looking at the replay. And they even talked about this on the on the broadcast. I was listening, of course, to the Kraken feed don't really know that we saw too much there, but Joey was pretty adamant. So uh, we didn't hear from him, at least not from the videos provided from the team about that. So, you know, who's to say, but I want to take a look at this heat map here, the Seattle Kraken. And, and, you know, I, I regret that I haven't done this more consistently during their winning streak. So we might have to do a little retro uh, retroactive look there, but I mean, the slot, nothing active in the slot. I mentioned that Jaden Schwartz after the game said he felt that the Kraken were being pushed out to the perimeter. I mean, this shows it. 
you have a little bit of activity in front of the net, but nothing dangerous. None of those blue pops on the heat map. You see that some of the blue, which is the high, high traffic for the Kraken, it's coming out well above the circles on either side. This little corner, if you're looking at the top, so that would be if as the Kraken are entering the zone, that's on their right side. That's not enough, especially considering if you look at the heat map for the pens, a lot more activity in front of Joey Decord, who started. You can see on their zone, it's within that uh, left circle that they're having a lot of, of success. Heat map strong there. But then also, they're moving through the slot. The Seattle Kraken, there's a lot of blank space. There's no activity in some areas of the slot. So good on the Penguins, but the Seattle Kraken are going to have to figure that out. I don't think the movement, the puck movement, the passing wasn't crisp. It wasn't particularly sharp. So again, a lackluster performance. Do I understand it to an extent? Sure. Am I disappointed? A little bit. Would, is this a bad loss? Within the context of the winning streak, no. If this was a loss at another point in the season, we might feel differently. And so I just want to add that context because, again, do I feel it's a bad loss for right now? It's unfortunate. I don't think it's – it's certainly not the worst game I've ever seen them play. But it was um, – it was certainly among the, the less exciting and less um, – it was it was one of the, the 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 bottom games in a in a ten game streak, you know, because you can play well in a loss and still lose. You can pay, play poorly in a win and still win. This was just mm, kind of a deflated looking Kraken team. But let me know in the comments what do you think about tonight's game. I give you my two cents. If you're watching on YouTube or find us at Locked on Kraken on social media and let me know what you think about the game. We're going to talk about, ooh, another one bites the dust. And I wish I could just talk about the Queen song, but we've got to talk about the Kraken. That's coming up on today's episode of Locked on Kraken, which is a little bit different, giving you a post-game recap as opposed to a game day episode. But don't worry, you'll get one of those preview episodes which is also a squad cast tomorrow. So stay tuned. I'll tell you more about that coming up on Locked on Kraken. Today's episode of Locked on Kraken brought to you by our friends at FanDuel. Now, you know that FanDuel is our number one sports book right here at Locked on Kraken. And that is because there are just so many different options, whether you are betting for the first time or you know a thing or two about a thing or two. You've got same day, same game parlays. You can use the new Explore tab if you are new and look at what bets are effectively trending or ones that you should check out. You should also listen to the Locked on Bets show and they'll tell you uh, the wrong team favorite, the WTF pick, which I love. I think that's amazing. Uh, you can also make your parlays in the Parlay Hub, which is the best way to find popular parlays. And that's just a few of the offerings that our friends at FanDuel have. I do want to let you know that as the NFL regular season is wrapping up, it is effectively wrapped up. There's still time to get into the action with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get 150 in bonus bets guaranteed. When you place a $5 bet, that's right, a $5 bet, and you are guaranteed 150 in bonus bets. So visit FanDuel.com backslash locked on to make your first bet a layup. FanDuel, official partner of the National Football League. Thanks, as always, for making Locked on Kraken a part of your daily destination. We don't want you to forget, we've also got our 24-7 YouTube channel. That's Locked on Sports Today. You can find your Locked on NHL experts, including myself, for the women's hockey 
Spotlight uh, alongside Gil and Rachel on the Locked On NHL Friday show. You can also find Locked On Women's Basketball, Locked On NBA, and on and on. So make sure you uh, subscribe to Locked On Sports today. Not what we wanted to see, you know, and, and not the fight that we have been seeing from the Seattle Kraken squad. But it's worth noting, before this game, Andre Burakovsky, out. Maddie Beneers, out. Vince Dunn, out. And I want to let you know, um, we'll, we'll talk a little bit um, about the Rangers game, but we just got the notes as I'm recording today. Because, again, this is a recap episode, not a preview episode. But in the game notes for tomorrow's game, we have, of course, Philip Grubauer. We know um, no designation. He's on the injured reserve. pierre Edward Belmar, we know he's on the injured reserve. Matty Benier, also no designation. One game day-to-day. So we'll see if he's available for tomorrow's game in New York. Andre Burakovsky, no designation, one game day to day. And Vince Dunn, no designation, one game day to day. Now, this doesn't list, this did just come out. So after the game against the, the Penguins, it does not list Adam Larson, but he did leave Monday's game with what Dave Haxtell called an illness. And I want to play this for you. It's a little over a minute long, but it's Dave Haxtell talking um, about that. It's perhaps not just Larson that wasn't feeling well. Here's Dave after the three nothing loss to the Pens on Monday night. Decided maybe energy being an issue leading to some of the sloppy execution. Is that pretty much in line with what you saw today? Well, for sure, we had some guys that were a little bit under the weather, so that you know that affects uh, you know some of the players in in the lineup with energy. Um, you know, that's that obviously doesn't affect everybody in the lineup. But uh, we didn't manage the puck very well in the first period. Uh, neither, and, you know, this is a team that pressures pretty well. They pressure hard. They have good sticks. Uh, we didn't come out of our zone as well as we needed to, and we definitely didn't enter into their zone. We didn't manage the puck well enough in the first period. That's where, you know, a lot of uh, <clears throat> a lot of the opportunities for them came from. They came right off our tape. Uh, a couple of mistakes early in the second period, and uh, you know, and we're chasing the game from there. When you lose basically your top D pair, just what goes into how you're juggling and managing the minutes of the rest of the guys? Well, it's five. You got five guys to go play. Those guys did a pretty good job. Um, you know, our, our D did a pretty good job. The five guys that uh, you know that were uh, that were in tonight, um, we didn't manage the puck well enough up front. The guys specifically that came in to fill in for your injured players, how do you think they they filled in, like Riker Evans and uh, Riker? Riker played a good hockey game tonight. Uh, Adam Larson didn't take a second period shift. What what happened there? Yeah, that's he he went out with an illness. An illness. Okay. Yeah. Do you have any updates you can offer on Andre Burakovsky or Maddie or Vince? I don't. Day to day on all three. On all three. Anything on Lars that day to day would you he, say Lars is? Well, he went out with an illness. Good. So there you go. Not much from Dave. You know, you get to know. Dave a little bit. I think he was a little bit agitated after this game. Said a lot of what we talked about in the first segment. Just not really managing the puck, not forcing the issue, not getting into spaces to put up a good fight. It was considered per the post-game analysis by the amazing Allison Lucan. Um, was considered a quality start on both sides. Uh, Joey made 30 saves and saw 32 shots and all 21 pushed aside by the penguins. Um, so, you know, uh, just, I, I don't really know what else can be said about this game. I don't want to take too much stock into the game because losses happen. You're not going to win all of them. This just didn't feel like, a regular degular loss, you know, it, it, there was a weird vibe and maybe it was that illness bug, but here's some good news. Um, 
I, I think that it's important to have perspective. And I think that the post game show did a pretty good job saying, Hey, you get nine, you get points in, uh, you know, 13 straight games, you win nine out of every 10 games. I think we'll take that for sure. And also the Kraken ahead of tomorrow's night posted an 11-1-2 record in their last 14 games dating back to December 12th. Seattle's 875 win percentage since December 12th topped the NHL and their 11 wins and 24 points were both tied for second during that span through January 15th. The Seattle Kraken did set a franchise record with nine consecutive wins between December 20th, excuse me, and January 13th. They got that ninth win, of course, against the Blue Jackets, which was an interesting game. I didn't talk about that one over the weekend, but not a great start once again for the Seattle Kraken, a little bit more back and forth, but then they picked it up. They turned on the heat, but, you know, uh, lost a few guys in the process. Vince Dunn did play that game. He defended Matty Beneers, who took a hit into the boards. Didn't like that hit at all on Matty B., so, you know, potentially two guys from that game. And then Larson with some mysterious illness. You know, that kind of happens. You're on a team and things follow you around. So hopefully it's not something that will plague the rest of the roster. Um, what we did see, though, because Vince Dunn out of the lineup, is that we saw Riker Evans, and he was actually paired with Larson, who usually Dunn is paired with. But as Larson was unable to return, and again, not from the game notes and not from Dave Haxtell in the clip that I just played you, we don't have an update. We're assuming he's day-to-day. An illness could be something where he just couldn't go for the rest of tonight and he'll be fine for tomorrow. It could leave him out longer. We don't know. But Riker Evans stepped in and kind of took on uh, you know, he he was the utility defenseman against the Penguins. Didn't see anything that stood out as far as something that looked bad from what Riker was doing. He talked about, uh, if anything, being able to rotate in multiple times was good in his return to the Kraken as opposed to thinking of it as a liability. He told Piper Shaw in the post game in the locker room. He also said that having those four games with Coachella Valley, he felt was good. So even though he hadn't been in the games with the Kraken, he went back to Coachella Valley and then had a few games on this road trip where he wasn't suited up, felt that he didn't really lose a step. And I don't think that he did. You heard Dave, he was very limited with his comments just generally, but was asked about guys like Riker who filled in. You also know that Devin Shore, of course, making that lineup, you had some changes with McCann switching. You know, he had been a center we, we've seen and switching things. So here we go on that carousel once again. But what I like about the Seattle Kraken is that they're not about to use this as excuses, which is critically important. Just got to play the game. And so I do like that the Seattle Kraken are taking it all in stride, even through the do- the dog days of this season early on, and we might not escape them all together. But I did think that the Seattle Kraken were able to have perspective and to know that at the end of the day, you're You're uh, dealing with the cards that you're dealt and you make the most of them. And so I do want you to hear from Jared McCann. Today's episode of Locked on Kraken is brought to you by our friends at Game Time. Now, I travel a lot. I'm on the road right now. Now, New York is a familiar city to me, but even in a familiar city like New York, or when I'm in Seattle, you want to be able to find the best deals on your downtime. And so when I'm not covering sports, yes, sometimes I go to sports events. I like to go to concerts. I like to go to theater performances, all kinds of things. But what I don't like is not finding the best price. And you shouldn't have to worry when you're looking to buy tickets for your next big event with killer last minute deals, all in prices and the view from your seat. 
There is also a best price guarantee. All that you can find at game time. You've got the flash deals, the zone deals, and the game time guarantee goes as such. You find a ticket at an event, same section, same row. If you find it at a better price than what's listed on game time, you get 110% of your money back. Game deal, game time also has hot deals and you can find ticket deals right up to the start of an event or even sometimes after an hour after it starts. It is the place to find last minute tickets. The zone deals that I mentioned, you pick the section and game time picks the seats for big time savings. So here's what we want you to do. Download the game time app, create an account and use code locked on for $20 off your first purchase. Terms will apply, but again, Go to the Game Time app, create an account, and redeem code L O C K E D O N for $20 off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price, guaranteed. I just didn't think we executed well enough. Um, we looked a little tired at times. Um, just didn't have that same jump and, and energy. and. Um, just weren't able to make passes and execute and, and uh, get to the inside enough. So we got to rest up, uh, get some energy tonight, and um, be better tomorrow. Uh, yeah, I mean, obviously when you're missing key pieces of your team, it's tough. You, we've done a good job all year of, of guys stepping in. And, um, you know, I think tonight, like I said, we just we just didn't have that same jump, looked, uh, looked a little tired, and um, guys not feeling 100%. I feel like throughout the season you're going to have some – ups and downs and um you know you got to ride that momentum while it's while it's there and uh, keep building off of it some things to know about tomorrow's game Jaden schwartz has recorded four points one goal and three assists in his last four games we love that for him since returning joey decord three stopped 394 of the 415 shots he has faced in his last 13 games not too shabby Our all-star, Oliver Bjorkstrand, will enter tomorrow's game having totaled 13 points, four goals, and nine assists in his last 13 games. So we love that for him. And, um, you know, Ellie Tolvanen has totaled seven points, two goals, five assists in his last six games. He's only played 43 games this season. He has already set a career high with 17 assists this year. Tolvanen's 11 goals and 28 points are seven and three points shy, respectively, of tying his career best that he set last season. So we like that trajectory for Tolvanen. You know I've been pretty high on that third line. So those are just some players to watch out for. Uh, You'll hear, of course, John and I talk about a few other players, including how some of the younger players are adjusting. But um, I think it has to be back to crack in hockey. And so, yes, you'll hear me talk about the three F's on tomorrow's episode. But as promised, I um, – but so for the rest of the week, we have a game day episode tomorrow. You'll also get that Ty Cartier bonus episode. You'll hear me talk with him effectively one-on-one that so that'll just be a little bonus episode thank you for commenting that i completely forgot to add that into the edit there is a lot going on uh so i will i will handle that but um we just got to stay healthy now and that's a big task i really hope andre burakovsky is not out for the long term and i hate to be right on something like this but I'll just say it this way. Even if he hasn't been injury prone, I've said it once. I'll say it multiple times over. It's looking like the Seattle Kraken, however you slice it, are not going to be able to rely on Andre Burakovsky alone to fix our offensive woes. I never thought that was a good plan. And it's a plan that has not been able to succeed and thrive because We keep getting freak accidents with Andre Burakovsky. I believe it was Nick Olchek mentioned in the post game or one of the intermissions that this one might not have even been contact. I know from covering basketball and soccer or football 
anytime you have a non-contact injury, it always raises eyebrows just because that means it could be something that's a little bit more serious. And I'm not saying that that's the case with Andre Burakovsky, and I'm relying on Nick Olchek's reporting that it was non-contact. I had some family things to do, so I was watching the game here and there. So I'll have to take another look at it, and uh, we're not going to get much, it doesn't seem, from Kraken Camp, and they might not know much right now, but something that we're going to have to keep talking about, unfortunately. And I know some of you don't like it, but the facts are the facts. We can't shoulda, coulda, woulda our way with Andre Burakovsky because at the end of the day, the numbers just aren't there. He's missed a significant amount of games due to injury. And so to say that, oh, well, we would be better if this, we would be better if that. Uh, well, first of all, that's always difficult, although we do that as analysis. But that's one thing to kind of use the stats and the numbers. I don't believe in using stats and numbers as absolutes when it comes to players because of things like injuries. So you can do the simple math, but even that math is not, it's not predictive enough for me, especially with a guy that has, at this point, I think we can say a pattern and a history of injury. It's unfortunate. I'm not, I'm certainly not blaming him. I don't think that we shouldn't have gone after him. We just happened to get him in this stretch of time where he seems to be injury prone. And so what does that mean? What does that look like moving forward? I don't know. But what it tells me, putting Andre Burakovsky and his relationship with the franchise to the side, what it tells me is if we were relying on him for offense, that, that we can't bank on that. We can't bank on that. A guy that's had, he's he's missed time now three times already this season alone. We got to talk about it, fam. It's no slight on Andre Burakovsky. It's no slight on the promise of him. It's no slight on what he's able to do when he is healthy and in the games. But the fact is that we just have not seen a healthy Andre Burakovsky. So how do we pivot? And I saw that on NHL.com slash Kraken. There is a, a, a touch in with Ron Francis. So once we get through this back to back, we can talk about that a little bit. But that's the end of this post game show on a Monday. Remember, I'll probably be looking exactly the same for tomorrow's episode. But it is a squad cast episode with John Chick. And stay tuned on audio and YouTube for that bonus material with Ty Cartier. As always, be kind to yourselves, be kind to one another. And tomorrow I will be at MSG as you from wherever you're watching will say, hold fast, stay true. And of course, loud and proud, let's go cracking. Make sure you're following along on social media. I'll try to document as much as possible while I'm at MSG. And I will catch you on the next episode of Locked on Cracking. Peace out, everybody.